She All likes right. it. She likes your title, Chuggy. Thank you. All right, YouTube. Thank you for clicking on the video. Welcome back to the channel. I am joined today again with Randy Chisholm for this week's edition of Chuggy Chat. How are you doing this week, Randy? Doing great. How about you? Oh, I'm not doing too bad. Good week of bowling, bad day of bowling, makes a good day at work, as I always say. Always. Always. <laughs> So we are broadcasting today from uh, AMF North Glen Lane. And for this edition of Chuggy Chat, since it's the springtime, the weather is getting warmer, people are moving around, that means tournaments. So today I thought we would talk about tournaments and uh, specifically, you know, how you're going to prepare for a tournament versus a night of league bowling if you're a league bowler and what some of the differences are in a tournament versus uh, you know, bowling. City and you play various uh, oil patterns. Um, it's not USBC sanctioned, there are USBC tournaments, of course, there are also house tournaments. Um, some things that I like to look for when I'm bowling in a tournament is the prize fund. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's good. It That's is. Good I mean, I mean, we're, let's not mince words here. Like, if you're bowling in a tournament, you're probably bowling because you want to make some money. Yeah, the you know? competition. Actually, the competition. So, that's what I want to talk about. So, one of the differences between bowling in a tournament versus a league, uh, as I touched on, is, you know, when you bowl a tournament, it's not necessarily going to be at your own house. It might be at a different house. Um, oftentimes, it'll be at a different house. Um, you're not bowling. Just a great sport to do. You're going to run into maybe some people we 
we prefer not to go with, and in some we prefer to. But if you're going to be a competitor, you're working on your game, that really doesn't matter when you're down there. You're living in your world. You're working on your game. You're trying to make cuts and make a little money, but you're making friendships in the process. So, Absolutely. And that, you, know, you touched on something that I want to bring up. Let's talk about expectations in a tournament now. Obviously, everybody would like to win, they at least like to cash, you know, make a good place, but, you know, what could happen versus what will happen are often two different things, and so you have to have, I'm not going to say logical expectations, you have reasonable expectations. I'm not, I used to have a horrible mental attitude. <laughs> My mental attitude for tournaments was... I need to cash out because I'm spending $80, $100 for a series for three or four games or whatever. That's a horrible attitude to have. That's the worst thing. That is so bad. I don't think like that anymore, thank goodness. But, you know, if you go into it looking to, if you go into it just specifically looking to make back the money that you're spending, you know, just strictly from a financial standpoint, you know, you, you've already let yourself down there. Not going into a clear head, you're not looking at it from the bowler's eyes. And Randy will talk a little bit more about the bowler's eyes. Yeah, if you're going in, uh, as Chucky mentioned, if you're looking to make money or get your money back, that is the absolute worst thing, like you said. Uh, you always want to go in. It doesn't matter if it's a practice league or a tournament. You want to come away with having learned something. And if your focus is so strong on your game, and improving and learning, then the success will take care of itself. It also takes away a lot of pressure, a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress, because you're not counting the money, you're not looking at the scores, you're just trying to learn. And as a result, your scores will actually go up. And that is very true. I, most of you have probably seen the video. I believe ABT this past weekend, I had a much better scoring series than I did the previous week. But I learned something, and what did I learn? That there is a whole world to the right, to the left side of the lane. There's a whole world down the middle of the lane, and I learned that house patterns, you know, you kind of play up the side throw patterns. I'm learning, you know, you have to learn to control the ball up the middle. And so, you know, knowing that, the knowledge that I'm going to take into my next ABT tournament, maybe not even ABT, I mean, there's going to be a lot of house tournaments coming up, so, you know, I recommend strongly, you know, calling your local bowling store and see what house tournaments they have going on. And, you know, dipping your feet in that way. A lot of house tournaments, especially during the summer, will have uh, a holiday has a little nine pin downtown. They sleep where they do every Friday. So, you know, get in touch with your local center see if they have things like that. You can kind of get your feet wet in and in the tournament a little bit. You know, just make that next step out of, you know, recreational or league bowling. One thing I'd like to add too, if you're preparing for a tournament, and in the summer they have a lot of sports leagues around, if you really want to become competitive, the ABT uh, Tour is, is an example that they have sport patterns out there. So you can bowl in these summer sport pattern leagues, you can increase your knowledge on how to attack these patterns so you'll be better at them when you want to get in these tournaments. Uh, one way to prepare for all tournaments, and everyone should actually do this, is visualize it. Uh, if you're down there and you're practicing the week before a tournament or a few days before the tournament, maybe you can't get in much practice time at all. I develop a system, and I'm sure this has been used on so many levels, uh, mirror time is what I call it, and you can practice in the mirror, side view if you have a full length mirror or facing the mirror depending on what it is you're looking at and just just be specific one area that you're looking at that you want to improve in maybe you've been struggling a little bit with it it could be push away it could be body alignment it could be anything but if you uh, are looking at that one specific area getting a little mirror time in repeating it making sure you see it make sure you feel it it's exactly what you want it's almost the same as being on the lens so you're still building the muscle memory. You're creating a great visual, and the greatness about mirror time is that the mirror doesn't lie. It's absolute perfection, and you can get exactly right what you want. So when you do go to the lines, you're going to be in a much better place to do what you want in that area. 
So mirror time, uh, I have some students that are, they have a mirror in their foyer as they're walking out the door. They're going to do this little motion, they're going to work on this or that, and then boom, they get in the car, they're driving, they're thinking about it, they're seeing it in their head, what they just saw in the mirror. They get to the lanes, they're changing their shoes, and when they get down there for practice time, it's still fresh. They see it, they feel it, and they can do it right out of the gate when they get on the lanes. So mirror time is, is huge. But it's all about visualizing. It's all about keeping that feel in your head and uh, being able to use it anytime you want to pull it out on, on, in the lanes. Absolutely. Like anything else, it'll take practice and it'll take time and effort and energy to put in. Like with anything, if anything is worth doing, then it's worth doing well. So that's my motto. Well, my Absolutely. Motto. But I want to thank you, Randy, for joining me for this week's edition of the Chat. Bias as always, I'm definitely going to use that in my next ABT tournament, my next tournament in general. So always, I will keep uh, the information, uh, Randy's information and uh, my information in the description. You can check out Randy at uh, strokeandroll.com. Strokeandroll.com. Strokeandroll.com, sorry about that. And then on Facebook, it's just Stroke and Roll. All right. Well, we will see you later. And... Uh, by the time this posts, the uh, contest will be going on. So make sure you email me, Bowling at yahoo.com, with your name, first and last name, and city and state to be entered into the ball contest. If you want more rules and descriptions about that, just look for the Chucky Bowling Ball Contest video on YouTube. So have a good one and keep on chugging. Keep rocking.